Hi, I'm Steve Martin, and I'm a white person, but not a very good one. Hi, I'm Terry Garr, and I'm one of the few white people in America who can dance. Hi, I'm Bob Eubanks, and I'm a white person. I've been on television for many years, and I guess this is the first time that I've ever publicly stated that I am a white person. This is difficult for me, but I guess that if it'll help any young people who are struggling with their whiteness, then it's worth it for me. My name is Martin Mull. Thank you. Please sit down. It's my pleasure to be your host tonight on our journey into whiteness. Over the last few years, the media has focused its attention on many of America's diverse ethnic groups, and we all watched. Yes, we all watched as Roots brought the black man's heroic story into our homes. Who could ever forget Ben Vereen as Chicken George? Have you? Me neither. And we all watched as Mario Puzo's Godfather splattered itself all over the silver screen. And expressions like goomba, pasta, and I'm your fucking brother, what is this? Became household words. Shogun, the real story of the Japanese, starring Richard Chamberlain. And for a couple of wacky half hours that always ended with a message, AKA Pablo, Norman Lear's look at the Mexican American at home. All fine shows, all fine people. But what, what may we ask? What about the white man? We live here too, don't we? What's our story? How does it start? What's the middle part? Does it have a surprise ending? <laughs> In short, what if anything has the white man been up to since let's say 1930 or thereabouts? It's a fascinating question and we'll do our best to answer it. Tonight's episode, part one, In Search Of. As you can see from this display, white Americans run the proverbial gamut from the very rich and embarrassing to the very poor and embarrassing. Tonight, in the spirit of generality, we'll focus our attention on the mean, the average, the norm, i.e. this fellow right here, whose name probably is Norm. If you identify with any of the others, well, you should still watch, because, well, we've gone to a lot of trouble. Excuse me, what's the first thing you think of when you think of white people? Well, it's kind of an average feeling. Mayonnaise. Wonder Bread. Oh, love. Standard meat and potatoes. Odori de kinai. So, as you can see, they are a stable and predictable people. Enough said. Now the big question. How do you spot a white family? Let's nose around a little bit and see if we can't dig one up, shall we? Our countywide search brought us to this man, Hal Harrison. He was fully insured and after a little coaxing, got pretty used to our cameras. His wife of 18 years, Joyce Harrison, a natural blonde and a whiz at cards. The Harrisons have two children, burgeoning 17-year-old Debbie Harrison and little brother, 11-year-old Tommy Harrison, a good eater. We thought the Harrisons were perfect for our studies because they were so darned white. Not all white people are the same, don't get me wrong, but they all have a few things in common that make them inescapably white. Look here. First, the lawn boy. In this case, the traditional style, painted white, of course. Or how about the lawn boy brand, lawn mower, ride em style. 
And over here, the high school summer job variety of Lawn Boy. Hi, Ralphie. I'm saving up for college, Mr. Moe. Well, bless your heart. As you can see, all whites love a good lawn. There are friendly people with a deep trust of their fellow man. Look at this. Gone shopping, back in four hours. Door open, beer in fridge next to peanut butter, the Harrisons. Now that's trust. So, let's go in. Now, what makes this living room white? Well, let's take a look around. First of all, there's nothing here from Europe. Nothing religious. Nothing manufactured before Eisenhower took office. There are no bargains here. This stuff is not cheap. It was all purchased at full retail value from a reputable brand-named outlet. No finagling, no family connections, full price. That's the white person's way. Oh, here it is. The Leatherette Television Guide Protector. And over it, the clear plastic Television Guide Protector Protector. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> Love them. These are the wild geese coasters. They're used to protect any natural woods, should they occur. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Dad's ornamental pipe rack, probably made by Tommy in shop class, my guess, Father's Day. And right next to it, the ubiquitous dog-eared copy of the world's finest golf jokes. Volume two. Got a funny feeling. These have been memorized. Oh, boy. Look how clean this place is. It's as if no one really ever uses this room. And why should they? On those very special days when Mr. Weatherman has a kind of sunny twinkle in his eye, you'll find these happy folks right where you'd expect to, out back, enjoying their Weber self-cleaning barbecue. <laughs> Joyce, honey? Mm-hmm. What are the seeds on these hamburger buns? Oh, they're sesame seeds. They're new. Well, we don't need them. Maybe I can scrape them off. Oh, listen, honey, can I borrow your mayonnaise? I'm making my famous potato salad, and I've got the potatoes and the onions and the pimentos and the gherkins, and I just... Oh, here it is. Oh, honey. Don't you have your own mayonnaise? I finished it at breakfast. Well, borrow some of Tommy's. He's got plenty. Hey, all Dad, right. where's all the mayonnaise in this house? Have you started eating already? You're going to spoil your appetite. Will you talk to him, Joyce, and use your own mayonnaise? You got plenty. No, I don't. Debbie took it to her slumber party. Well, uh, she didn't ask my permission. Well, there goes the potato salad. There goes the whole meal. Well, maybe it's just as well. Remember what happened last summer's picnic with your potato salad? All the people being rushed to the hospital? Honey, that wasn't my fault. You take anybody's potato salad. You put it out in the hot sun, and that's going to happen. And anyway, it was because everybody was drinking so much. Well, don't talk to me about drinking. Talk to your father. He's the one that started us. And we got there at 7 in the morning. What else were we going to do? And don't give me a lecture on drinking. Is this roach killer supposed to be here with all the Leave food? it there. Keep the bugs away. Yellow! Oh, where are you turkeys? Well, get on over here. The burgers are almost ready. What? The whole team? Joyce says it's okay. More the merrier. We got plenty. Okay, get on over here. Mayonnaise. Wait a minute, Joyce is mayonnaise. on. What? What? Mayonnaise. 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 Uh, do us a favor, will you? Will you stop and pick us up some mayonnaise? About uh, about five jars will do her. All right, then get on over here. Oh, bring that uh, volume three of the golf joke book. Okay, buddy. Bye bye. Uh, oh, honey. What? I was going to get that for you for your birthday. Me too. <laughs> oh, honey. This is about as good as it gets, isn't mm -hmm. it? Don't you have something to do? Is your, is your room straighten up? Go on, get, get doing something. Bring me a beer, will you, honey? Yeah. Mm, let me know when your dad gets here. Okay. He owes me some money, you know. But a meaningful family life is not all there is to being white. What about the white professional, you may ask? We found one in California. I guess one of the biggest difficulties in being white for me is being typecast in mostly white roles. I guess it's a problem when I first started. I should have done more black roles, but uh, I found one picture led to another, and pretty soon I was known as a white person. I guess the latest thing that happened to me was the Wilt Chamberlain story. I went in to read. I was very good. And yet they cast a lesser experienced black person in the role. Just one of the things I'm going to have to live with as a white person in the United States. Now, 
What makes a person white? Is it simply a matter of skin pigmentation or the lack of it? Not necessarily. For instance, is this famous basketball player a white person? No, he isn't. Wrong occupation. Is this a white person? I'm sorry, wrong neighborhood. Is this a white person? Oddly enough, yes. How about these folks? <laughs> you got me. Your guess is as good as mine. And despite their brand new drummer from Jamaica, these boys remain white. But I'm sorry, Diana, you've just got too darn much soul. The answer is still no. However, there's no question about this happy little white fella or his father. Okay. Today, class, we are going to be discussing heritage. Heritage. Where we all came from. Who would like to tell us about heritage first? Hmm? Jamal. Well, according to my father, the earliest information we have about our family tree traces us back to pre-slavery Ghana on the west coast of Africa where my forefathers lorded over thousands of acres of fertile farmland, developing farming techniques which are still in use today. Very good, very good. Can you tell us about your forefathers, Yehudi? Since I'm sure we're all familiar with the Old Testament, I'll spare you the details and jump ahead. After my grandfather left Eastern Europe in 1903, we landed on Ellis Island, and through generations of such sacrifice, I can't tell you ultimately succeeded in the field of children's ready-to-wear and flexible packaging. Thank you, Yehudi. That was lovely. Tommy. Hmm. What about your heritage? Uh... First we lived on Maple Street, and then we moved on over to Elm Street, where I finally got my own room. Is that enough? Yes, that's just fine. Well, I hope you keep that room spanky, shiny, clean. Are you kidding? My mom does that. Oh, <laughs> good. And that's just what she should do, right, class? OK, who's next? Uh, Consuelo. We don't exactly know where white people are from, but we do know where they are now. By and large, they live here, at least our norm does. And though they live here in the suburbs, they tend to work and bank downtown. But they don't work all the time. At least two weeks a year, they go on a vacation here, here, and here. They tend to die here and here, and are often buried here. Unfortunately, dead white people can't tell us very much. An approximate guess as to height and weight, and perhaps a hint as to the origins of bowling. That's about all. We need to talk to living white people to get the big answers. And that's exactly what the doctors and scientists do here at the Institute for White Studies in downtown Zanesville, Ohio. The Institute was established in 1956 under a generous grant from J.C. Penney and the Tasty Freeze Corporation. If a white person has done it, whatever it is, we find out about it and have a file on it. If they haven't done it, we try to find out why. And then we file it. Now, our research shows that these are the five most popular white meals. You have your macaroni and cheese, your grilled cheese sandwich, plain cheese sandwich, tuna noodle casserole with potato chip topping. Now, you can do this homemade, or Stouffer's has a dandy one, in case you're pressed for time. And then for a dry snack, we have your portable and affordable cheeses. Our mission to lay to rest and try to disprove the stereotypical image of the white person as... Boring? I guess you'd have to say boring, huh, Charles? Yes, I've heard that. Uh, redundant? Yes, I believe you said that earlier. That brings to mind predictable. I had a feeling you were going to say that. <laughs> How about unimaginative? With experts of this caliber at our disposal, we had very little trouble convincing the Harrisons that being tested and analyzed here at the Institute would not only increase the quality of their lives, but the quality of our show as well. The Institute has spent years researching white likes and dislikes in areas like man-to-animal relationships and household pets. 
religions, nonprofit, and call in. Pant legs, cuffless with a slight break, or a good old grass catcher with a little leg. Using methods originally developed by NASA for just these purposes, we monitor their every natural move. For instance, how the Harrisons go to sleep. Very good. A great deal can be learned by examining their dreams. Hold up all the way to the chin. Yeah. Shoulder exposure. Here you are, Mr. and Mrs. Harrison. It's all yours. And thanks to winning the Publishers Clearinghouse sweepstakes, the mortgage is taken care of. I can't believe it. And it paid for the carpeting, too. We're going to be here for the rest of our lives. And their nightmares. Hello, new neighbor. Welcome. See you at the Safeway. Oh, shit. Dancing Q-tips. Honey, um, I think they like to be referred to as towel heads. I think we'll have to increase the dosage on him. By now, I hope you've come to realize, as I have, that the white person is a truly fascinating individual. But as they say, no man is an island. Hawaii is an island. Manhattan, Capri, Treasure, Fantasy, these are all islands, a small body of land completely surrounded by water. The point I'm trying to make is that the white man, like all men, is a social animal. White people thrive in groups, from the PTA and the DMLA to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. But nowhere is the beauty of white people acting in concert more profound, more fundamental, and yes, I'll say it, more heartwarming than the basic family unit. Good old mom and dad and two children enjoying some private quality time together. Let's watch. Uh, Father, we thank thee for providing Joyce with this food to fix for us, this um, butterball turkey, the stovetop stuffing, the, uh, what is that, dear squash? Oh, no, honey, that's Del Monte mixed vegetables. Right. Spanish style. They right. do. What about the Jello? Honey, I didn't know you wanted Jello. If you'd have just told me, I would have made some for you. Can we continue, please? Uh, Father, we also thank thee for this wonderful house and all we own and all we plan to own. What about the car? That is included, Tommy. You know, just because I didn't like Jello last week doesn't mean I don't like it now. Honey, can we talk about this later? Your father's praying for and us. And I would like to get it over with, too, Debbie. Because we're all starving. That's right. Uh, Father, we, um, and of course, when I say we, I'm referring to all four of us. I'm Hal Harrison. I'm, I'm Joyce Harrison. Debbie Harrison. Tom Harrison here. Uh, so, Father, we thank uh, thee for just being you, or, or thou. Uh, and we're saying, keep up the good work, and we'll see you come Christmas. Jesus, I hope so anyway, right, gang? Honey, did, did you want to mention, uh, you know, your mother? Uh, no, dear, we're here to give thanks, Sorry. not to question shortcomings and frailties. Is that it? All right, everyone, all together? Good, good food, good, good meat, meat, good God, God let's eat. Amen. Amen. Next time on The History of White People in America, Part 2, A Closer Look, Including White Mating Rituals. Go ahead and ask him. What are they going to do, Crown Jeff? Mom? Mm hmm? Is it okay if Jeff and I go up to my room to work on our book reports? Ask your father. Dad? Ask your mother. I'm worried my mom's going to hear us. Just put a pillow over your face, like last time. And the bizarre world of white sex. Did you see Johnny last night? Yeah. That girl he had on? <sighs> what monstrous tits. Oh, boy, I'd love to get my hands on those suckers. Yeah, you and whose army? No, I'm not kidding. Yeah. Would you think those are real? <sighs> no. Couldn't be. They bobbled like they were real. Well, sure, they do that. But yeah. I saw her on a show last week, and they were different. Whites after dark. Honey, I'm worried. It's after 2 a.m. and it's awfully quiet in Debbie's room. Oh, relax, honey. They're both good students and a good book report can take hours. 
Go to sleep. Maybe some NyQuil. And finally, whites in conflict. There are only two legs on a fucking turkey, Tommy. Give your sister a bite of your drumstick, for Christ's sake. I don't want any. This stuffing is dry every year. It's like dog food. I think everything needs more salt, don't you? Why do the vegetables always have cheese sauce? Uh, honey, that's color. I hate this meal. Your mother worked hard to prepare a nice meal, young lady. Now show some appreciation. You hate every meal. You're an Rex. Tommy. I like jello, dorkhead. Nah. Hey, how come she gets to leave without being? I think Dallas is losing. I better check this out. Honey, save room for pumpkin pie. We've got a uh, 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 cool whip. No, we don't. I ate it. Tommy. One of the best shows I've seen on TV, and I watch a shitload of TV. Fabulous costumes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard all about it, but I'll watch Knight Rider instead. Every man, woman, and child in America should be strapped to a chair and forced to watch that show. Several times. I'm not kidding. And I'm not either. Hello, I'm Martin Mull. What you've just seen are reactions to our program, The History of White People in America, Part 1, In Search Of. These are but a few of the hundreds of responses we received. 86% positive, I'm happy to say. Many people were stirred by our presentation. Frankly, it raised disturbing questions for some. The most frequent being, where in the hell is part two? <laughs> well, tonight, here in the hell is part two. <laughs> Tonight's episode, part two, A Closer Look. Last time, we got a good idea of who the white American is. Tonight, we're going to try to find out why. Why does he act like that? Why does he dress like that? Why does he think like that? And why do we care? We're here in the home of Hal and Joyce Harrison, the white family we targeted for investigation in our last program. As it turned out, we loved them. They loved us, so we came back. For more. And shit. For Hal Harrison here, I think being filmed for our show and discovering his whiteness in the process was a real eye opener. You bet it was an eye opener. That's all anyone down at the office talked about for a couple of weeks. It was white this and white that. They even started calling me Whitey. I think everyone must have watched the darn show. Except us, of course. We missed the last half. Our set crapped out here. Oh, Christ, these are all Phillips heads. Joyce! Hal and Joyce's oldest, Debbie Harrison, parlayed her new sense of ethnic confidence and celebrity into the vaunted position of student council president. Next item on the agenda, gym clothes. I say that anyone caught wearing street socks to gym is expelled permanently, okay? It's a law. Next, deodorant dispensers in the bathrooms, especially the boys. All in favor? Next. Spam sandwiches in the cafeteria every day. Any discussion? 11-year-old Tommy Harrison was a little too young to fully comprehend the concept of his white heritage. Of course, at his age, he's too busy being white to think about it. You're Japanese. No, you're Japanese. No, you're Japanese. You're Korean. No. But the biggest change of all occurred with Joyce Harrison. She was determined to help other White Housewives find themselves, as she has found herself. We meet every Wednesday afternoon at my house. At first, it was just me and Irma. But then, before you knew it, we'd recruited everybody in our Amway group. The first order of business um, is the casserole assignments for next week. Yeah, well, okay. I, I, whoever made the tuna casserole last week, I oh, mean, it I was... Oh, I think that was Irma. Irma? Yeah, Irma it was, made it. you know... It was way too spicy. I don't know. It was a little peppery. Well, I've been making it... 
years, just like this. Pepper's a binder, you know, it's all right if you're having a little digestive problem, but you know, do you have to use a lot of white sauce and yeah. mushroom soup? That's real, exactly you know, right. I mean, uh, it was I, good. Yeah, all right, I, fine. Okay, Look, yeah. I hate to argue. Let's just drop it, okay? Oh, oh, wait a minute. Irma hates to argue. Ah. Uh, Irma, do you think that could have anything to do with your being white? Uh, oh. What do you think? There you go. Yeah. Okay, come on. Why don't you stand up and tell us about it? Come on. Okay. Up, up, come on, Irma. There she goes. <laughs> <clears throat> And this is Thomas Clark. Irma, to you. And I'm a white person. Hi, Hello, Mrs. Mrs. Clark. Clark. Uh, I've just begun to realize that there are, are just a whole lot of things that a white person like me doesn't like. And arguing is, is right up there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I also don't like Parallel parking? Oh, oh honey, I identify. You do? Yeah. yeah. Murder. I yeah. need to get a small car. Oh, yes. 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 I thought I was the way. only one. No. No. Another thing I don't like is not being appreciated by my husband when I'm just doing my darndest to keep my home clean and pretty. Right. <laughs> oh, go with uh, Irma. Go honey, with don't it. sit oh, on it. Go Let it out. It. <laughs> Let it out. <laughs> well gonna sound silly, but I bought this little chenille toilet seat cover for the powder room. Oh, And sweet. Tom says it's too puffy, and the oh, lid won't yeah. stay up when he has to go number one. And why can't he hold it up with the other hand if yeah. it means a prettier bathroom? Uh, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> Irma, uh, Irma, Irma what? is it permanently attached? No, it, it, it just ties oh. in the back, you know, with Little. one of those snap-on bow yes, things. Yes, yeah. of course. It's just darling. Oh, yeah. I think it's a Irma, precious well, thing. You could remove it then, right? But why? Wait a minute. But why should she live without it? I mean, it's part of a match set. And a man wants a nice home. She's trying to make a nice home. Men, Absolutely. they expect this. They get it from their mothers, and they expect it from us. They're full of unrealistic expectations. Thank and then you when you God. try to fulfill That's them, there you are. You're trying to, you know, please Peter and pay Paul, and, and you can't do either because he's wanting this and wanting that. He wants a nice bathroom, yet he, he if it's in the middle of the night, then he gets upset if the thing comes crashing down on So what? That's so right. So what? He wants it, it to look nice in the daytime and be nice at night. I, you can't be both. No, no, no. It's Irma, what we thought. Uh, I believe uh, Irma has the floor. Irma, go. You huh. could live without it, right? Yes. No. No, I don't want to. I don't want to live without it. I like it. It's pretty. Good. It's pretty, and it's Go. it's Go paid for. for. Uh -huh. Tell us, and it's Tell it's us. a statement about me. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. right. And, and my my whiteness. Oh. 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 Irma, you are oh. 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 Irma, I'm so proud of you. Irma. Why don't you bring Tom and that little chenille toilet cover to our next meeting, and we'll just thrash it out over some decaf. <gasps> yeah, oh, hey, gee, I feel not... better already. See, <laughs> it's not that hard being white, is it? No. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, oh. who's next? Oh. oh, that's enough chit chat. Why don't we eat? Yes. 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 Good idea. I'm going to take my coat off. Wonderful. Oh, have a good yeah. appetite with that. Can I use your microwave? Yeah. You know. I'm going to never use mine anymore. I know. Well, boy, there's a heartwarming example of how the modern white woman is spending her leisure time. But what about her male counterpart? What the heck is he up to when he's not at the office? Like all healthy Americans, he has a passion for sports. He plays croquet with a vengeance, tennis with his boss, horseshoes with the neighbors, and canasta with some sauce. But for all of his amateur enthusiasm, our white friend is seldom seen amongst the ranks of the professional athlete. Golf, shuffleboard, and square dancing excluded, of course. Sour grapes? None here. It's just a cold, hard fact. For example, here we have a picture taken at a recent professional basketball contest. To the naked eye, it seems like quite a cross-section of humanity. However, let's take a closer look with the help of a special device called the Segratron, developed by NASA for just this purpose. Shocking, isn't it? The only true whites we find are the aging referee cowering under the basket. And unless I miss my guess, 
This Joker is simply two days early for the ice follies. Why is this? Is it a physical problem? Are white people, as many will say, physically inferior? This is a calf muscle of one of America's leading athletes. And here is my own. You be the judge. Those of you who find no significant physical difference can register your vote by dialing toll-free 800-555-1646. And those of you who find a significant difference, call 900-555-1647. It's only 50 cents. Operators are standing by. We'll have the results before the end of our program. Let's settle this calf muscle nonsense once and for all and get on with our lives. Like all minorities, the white man must multiply to survive, and this requires sex education, a touchy subject. For the white person, crucial to this educational process, the telephone. You touched it? Bambi, that's gross! I can't believe you even looked. What? Well, my dad's, years ago. Tommy? He's a kid, big deal. Was it fun? Was it like Porky's? It was better than Porky's? Tell me! With the lights on? Irma, that is gross! Well, I know he's your husband, but... You let him do what? What do you mean, ask Cal if he wants to? He doesn't want to do that. Oh, no. Uh-uh. Oh, no, Hal is perfectly happy with our love life, just as it is. Listen, Frank, let me ask you something. What would you do if your boss's wife, who just happens to be 26 and gorgeous, comes over to your house knowing full well your wife is not at home and proceeds to beg you? You heard me right. I said begs and I meant begs. That's right. That's exactly what I did. And I feel terrible. But Frank, the thing is, I think I could have. So, as we see, the telephone is a wonderful tool for learning about our bodies. And for white folk, it beats the pants off of talking about sex face to face like apparently they do in Sweden. However, Tommy has obviously been learning about life from sources other than mom, dad, and Mr. Rogers. And he's paying the price that many of today's white children pay, a whopping identity crisis. It's time for professional help. What the hell is this? Tommy's in good hands now. Like thousands of confused white children, he's been brought here to the Institute for White Studies in the heart of Zanesville, Ohio. The deprogramming wing of the Institute for White Studies was established in 1957 under a generous grant from the Kraft Corporation, Miracle Whip Division. Here's how it works. First of all, a mixed up child is bathed thoroughly, dressed in acceptable clothing, and then goes through an intensive therapy session to regain his lost sense of self-identity and self-worth. Um, what do most people put in coffee? A donut? Tommy, what would you rather be? An astronaut or a bass player in a reggae band? What's reggae? Excellent. I think we're making some headway. How many Osmonds are there, Tom? Tom. Uh, eight. Name them. Uh, Donnie, Marie, Jimmy. Is there a Julio? Julio. Julio. You never had a Julio. Hmm. Now, you'd be a good little soldier, Tom. Bless your heart. Congratulations, Mr. Oh, and Mrs. Harris. Thank you. I'm sure we'll have our son back in just a few short weeks. Great. Meanwhile, it's cost us an arm and a leg. Honey. And we're still going to miss the breakfast. Uh, he's talking about the father-son Kiwanis pancake breakfast. He's one of the sponsors. I'm a sponsor, for Christ's sake. The Hawkins Falls Greater Regional Annual Kiwanis Club Father-Son Pancake Breakfast is, in a word, but one of many of thousands of such get-togethers that occur daily throughout white America. Let's take a moment to pay homage to some of these creative, resourceful, 
and fun-loving folks, can't we? The esprit de corps among white Americans is unparalleled. The smiles on these men's faces, not to mention their bellies, tells an important story. Namely, you don't have to drink to have fun. This is called touch dancing. These people tell us they love it, and they have every right to tell us and to love it. This club has over 60 members. This picture was taken during a recent flu epidemic. And here we have the 45th annual Thanksgiving dinner for the descendants of the Roy and Nellie New Farmer family, a perfect example of getting together on a regular basis for no reason in particular. We've obviously seen some happy faces. And isn't that the point of living, to be happy? Yes, it is. And what better symbol do we have for happiness than this cheery little son of a gun right here, the happy face. Now to some, he's an innocuous white cliche, not to me. How could he be? The mere sight of his beaming little yellow kisser lights up my every morning. And I'm not alone in this one. Look how the happy face has spread to all cultures, all peoples, all parts of the world. First stop, England. And the rest of the Commonwealth. Canada, Burr. Their friends down under, that's right, Australia. And I believe they still own India, along with Union Carbide. I'd have to check. Then there are friends in Europe, the Italians. Beautiful Italy. And that's deep dish. Their friends and one-time allies, the fun-loving and beer-loving German people hopscotching the world to our friends in the Orient, the Chinese, their neighbors, the Japanese, and everywhere else on this great earth of ours, from Israel to, you guessed it, the dark continent, Africa, all the way to lowly Siam. A happy little fella, isn't he? But you're saying, what's the point? Well, the point is, just as the baby bird must leave the nest, and those little turtles you see on public television go crawling back into the sea for Lord knows what reason, so too must the white man open his eyes to other cultures if he is to survive. Let's face it, white people are not exclusively in charge anymore. It's time to reach out, and the Harrisons know this. So let me get something straight, Sid. They're not really princesses like in London or Monaco, huh? <laughs> no, that's just in our jokes, my new friend. <laughs> oh, yeah, sit down, take a load off. Thank you. Um, hey, you got another little hat on under that hat, huh? This is a yarmulke. That's right, yarmulke. It's like the uh, motorcycle only with a K, yarmulke. Yarmulke. Remember uh, it however you need to, Hal. Uh -huh. Tell me, is it only on special occasions that the kids put those little propellers on it? We don't do that. Oh, no? No. Uh, well, they also make very good pianos. Who does? Yamaha, our Japanese friends. Oh, I did not know this. I knew about the Steinway I knew. Mm, well, of course, Steinway, that'd be your people. Yeah. Anytime there's a chance to make a buck, they jump in their feet first, huh? It's an excellent instrument. Yeah, well, we got a cheapie over there. Yeah. Fine, fine tone on a Steinway. Yeah. Could fine. you get us one, like, a uh, discount, wholesale? I would have to make a few calls. I, uh... Hey, this is terrific. I think we're gonna have a great relationship here. I'm glad we met. <laughs> I as well. It's a geschnacke feeling. You, you yeah. said it. Took the words right out of my mouth, my friend. Yeah. Let me ask you something else. Yeah. What are these little things called? Oh, these are payas. Payas. What yeah. else? Payas by the 15th that we'll repossess, huh? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm pulling your leg. You're okay. Have a piece of ham and a nice cold glass of milk. Maybe, maybe to take for the dog, I would. Yeah. Well, don't take too much. You know, it's gotta last us through, through the weekend. Honey? Honey, uh, the professor here is going to take some of our food home. So when Irma told me that one of my neighbors was sick, I decided to do the neighborly thing. Oh, I'm a Sikh, Mrs. Harrison. I'm not sick. Oh. Oh! My face couldn't be redder. Sometimes, you know, you just can't win for trying. Uh, still, I think it's a shame to let good tomato soup go to waste. It's Campbell's, you know. I made it with milk instead of water. Can I come in? Oh, sure. But would you mind leaving that stuff out here and taking off your shoes, please? 
Oh, all right. You know, um, the beauty of this neighborhood, you'll discover, is that I can leave this hop out here and come out, you know, from your house whenever. <laughs> and uh, it'll still be out there. Sure. Oh, this is pretty. Well, the votes are in on that white calf muscle deficiency issue. A lot of them, as you can see. Here's a beauty. Our calf is black and white. She can't jump at all. Can I be on your show? Future farmer in Oregon. A recipe for veal. As far as I'm concerned, they prove absolutely nothing. Let's face it. You can't judge the athletic ability of a calf muscle by just looking at it. The human calf muscle is located between the ankle and the knee. Right here and back. It's both an extendor and a flexor. And furthermore, its strength can best be judged in exercises like jumping. OK, gentlemen, on my whistle, jump ball. Wait, 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 wait. Well, what's the point in going through with this, really? I am not here to humiliate myself. I'm really here to realize uh, a dream that uh, every white male in America shares, and I think, and that is to meet a great black athlete and uh, be able to tell them we're friends. In fact, could you sign this to uh, Marty? Marty could be in quotes. And maybe uh, sign it Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Sure. BB, I th it's two Bs. Isn't this fabulous? This is great. Thank you. It's my pen. We have tried to give you a true, unbiased portrait of the white American, but no portrait is ever as revealing as the self-portrait. Let's face it, that's how we knew that Van Gogh was nuts. It is in much the same spirit that white Americans are beginning to speak out, to celebrate their own uniqueness in their own unique way in gatherings all across this great country of ours. All right, all right. But sure, we also have our shortcomings. We can't run as fast or dance as well as others. Which reminds me of a wonderful joke Cal Adams told me a few minutes ago. I will not repeat it in mixed company. We also don't have the rich heritage that others may have. And no, we don't know good food from bad. And yes, we tend to get uptight when it comes to the subject of SCX. And yes, we depend too much on dairy products. And yes, perhaps our white leaders have single-handedly screwed up the greatest experiment in democracy in the history of mankind and caused endless strife and irreparable damage throughout the rest of the world. But I say, so what? We still have a heck of a lot to be proud of, am I right? And it was time for the world to roll up its sleeves and give Durfur a licking he'd never forget. Who saved the most string and had the biggest tinfoil balls? Concerned white people, that's who. <laughs> and in the 50s, when the pinko threat was everywhere, who turned their downstairs bathroom into a bomb shelter and saved spam and candles so we could live to tell about it? Resourceful white people, that's who. <laughs> Kennedy, an Irish Catholic, ran for president in 1960, who organized all those barbecues and picnics? Everyone, including lots of young white girls. And when Lee Iacocca, an Italian immigrant, and his Chrysler Corporation almost went belly up due to a lot of Japanese imports, who bailed him out? Every American taxpayer, that's who, many of whom were white and couldn't have cared less and had the money taken out of their paycheck without even knowing about it. We're proud of our scientists. We're proud of our professional people. Our friends and our neighbors. Get up there, Hill Adams, Jack Lambert. <laughs> in conclusion, in conclusion, I'd like to leave you with something my father used to tell me when I was just a lad, and I think it pretty well sums it all up, and I'd like to quote, quote, the flag that waves above us all is mainly red and blue, but we wouldn't have stars or half of its stripes if it wasn't for the white part, too. I couldn't have said it better myself. In fact, there's really nothing I can add to this stirring presentation except to thank you for joining us and to wish you all a great weekend, whatever you are. I'm Martin Mall. So long. Bravo! Stick around, the ladies and gentlemen. We have a great spaghetti dinner. And the little individual.
little ice cream cups you asked for. I'm Marion Ross. Didn't you enjoy that program? Me too. You know, if you want to find out more about white people and the part they played in American history, your library is a great place to start. The books are free. Unless you're a slow reader, and then it's just a few cents a day for overdue charges. Now, the books we recommend to start with are Five Star Favorites, The Collected Recipes of Ike and Mamie Eisenhower, The Best of Family Circle, Valley of the Dolls, Pat Boone, the man in his art, and of course, the New Testament. Now, if your town doesn't have a library or a bookmobile, please write to We Want a Library After All. That's Box 1985, Washington, D.C., 10046. Thank you. I'm Marion Ross, a white person.